What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is episode 13 and uh, for this one we start things off at the win but we don't quite finish things there so stay tuned to find out where we do finish. Speaking of the win, I'm actually about to walk in there right now to play another session. This is back from my uh, second trip out to Vegas in November. However, it is currently February 7th or 8th or something along those lines, and we're back in Vegas. So, hoping to have another good session tonight. So let me jump into that, and you guys jump right into this. We start things off with a premium holding, Ace King of Hearts under the gun. Now this is a deep stacked 1-3 game at the win for anyone not familiar, so we're in for $500. The hand prior to this, under the gun plus one, I actually had pocket queens. I opened to 25, got a call from the cutoff, C bet the flop, and I just took it down. Nothing too exciting. But what's important to take away from that hand is, that same player who's currently on the button was willing to call a larger opening sizing. I opened to 25 from under the gun. That's a pretty strong range, and he did make the call. So once again, in this hand, I'm gonna do the same. I open to $22, it folds to that same player who's now currently on the button who makes the call. The blinds fold and we're heads up. The flop is a good one. King, nine, four, two clubs. I like to play this one a little bit tricky as the hand prior, I see bet, he folded right away, and I'd like to try to get some value here. I check, and he checks back. The turn is now the jack of spades. Now it's time to get some money in, and I go for a smaller sizing of $20. Our boisterous buddy on the button now goes for the raise to $60. So queen 10 would be the nuts on this board, but there's so many draws out there that he could be doing this with, as well as uh, hands that have one pair with a redraw, king queen, queen jack, jack 10 suited, things of that nature. So he doesn't necessarily have to have queen 10 in this spot, and we have a very, very strong hand. I still feel that we're ahead here, and I'm gonna charge the max for any of those draws our opponent may have. I three bet up to $200. Our opponent thinks for a bit, but puts in the call. We're off to a river in a pot that has ballooned up on the turn from $44 up to $444. The river is now the eight of diamonds. Queen 10 is still the nuts, and this card really only improves Jack 10 suited. It's time to apply max pressure in the situation and put every other hand but those two in a very tough spot. I jam for my remaining stack and our opponent snap folds. Very happy I went for the three bet on the turn there. It looks like we charged the max for a draw that bricked uh, based on our opponent's snap fold there, so very happy to start the session off with a win. In our next interesting hand, we have ace three of spades in the small blind. There's a middle position limper and the cutoff opens to $15. The button calls and now it's on me. I think this would actually be a nice spot for a three bet with a suited ace playing out of position, but I think a call is also fine sometimes and this time we decide to go with the call. The middle position limper comes along as well. We're going four ways to a flop and I'd like you to imagine the best possible flop for our specific holding. You got it? Good, we don't quite get that, but pretty damn close when the board comes ace, 10, eight, two spades. We are four ways and have this board completely crushed, so I start things off with a check. Middle position checks, and the cutoff goes for a check as well instead of continuing. Right around this time, I'm starting to plan what my turn sizing will be when the button comes in clutch with a bet of $40. This is music to my ears, I love you button player, I make the call, and the other two players fold. Remember when I said to envision the best possible flop? Now let's do the same thing, envision the best possible turn card, got it? Good. The turn comes to six of spades. Pretty much any spade would have been perfect here, but I am happy nonetheless. I play in flow and check. Now the button seems a little suspicious and checks back. River comes the queen of hearts. Sitting with the nuts here, I absolutely cannot allow this to go check check again. So I go with a roughly two thirds sizing and bet out $100. The button snap calls. I turn over the goods and he shows us ace king of hearts. I actually misread his hand at first and thought it was ace jack suited. That would have made a ton more sense. Then when I realized it's ace king suited, the disrespect on that snap call. Looks like we could have gone even bigger based on how quickly this guy called us and clearly did not believe us as all he had was one pair, but very happy to take this one down. Some time goes by and we're under the gun once again with a premium pocket kings. Our buddy from earlier is actually racking up to go play a bigger game. So instead of going with a larger sizing, I elect to open to only $10. We get three callers, the cutoff, button, and big blind. We're off to a flop of nine, six, five, two spades. The big blind checks, I continue for $17. The cutoff folds, the button makes the call, and the big blind gets out of the way. So now we're heads up to a turn of the four diamonds. I don't really love this card as it does connect well with the board, but upon further inspection, it really doesn't change much of anything. Seven eight was already a flop straight and three deuce seems like a bit of a stretch for our opponent to have here. So unless he has pocket fours, I think we're still ahead at this point. 
I continue for $40. Our opponent thinks for a little while before making the call, but eventually sticks it in. The river now pairs the board with the six of diamonds. I think this is a good card for us. All the draws miss, unless he was drawing with something like 7-6 suited or 6-9 suited, I think we're in the clear here to go for a little more value. I go with a slightly over half pot size bet of $85, targeting uh, like a 9x hand or a smaller pocket pair such as jacks, tens. He actually calls pretty quickly. I table my hand and he mucks. Not sure exactly what our opponent had in this spot, but I'm pretty confident it's the exact type of hand we were targeting. Nonetheless, very happy to take it down. You may be wondering how I ended up with a $100 bet in front of me with King-6 offsuit. Well, I wish I could rewind and capture all the action prior to this point, but this was the very next hand after the pocket king's hand. I was still stacking my chips and was writing notes in my phone from the previous hand when this one started. Didn't think anything was really gonna happen when I looked down at king six, but little did I know we'd end up here. So let's catch up. We're in the big blind with king six offsuit, and after a few players limp in, I just check. The flop comes pretty nice, king 10 deuce, two spades. We have top pair and no kicker, so I open to $10. We get two collars, middle position and the button. The turn is now the king of diamonds. As this was a limped pot pre, I really don't expect my opponents to have many strong kings in this situation, and we can account for three of them. So I actually slow down and check here, hoping to induce a bet from like a 10x holding, a flush draw, or even open the door for one of my opponents to start bluffing. Middle position checks, but the button must have heard our internal monologue as he bets out $30. Now we're ready to spring the trap. I check raise to 100, and now we're caught up. Middle position player now calls the 100, which is a little worrisome. He has about 400 or so behind. The button player calls as well. He only has about $70 or so behind, so that's a little less worrisome. I think if he had anything decent, he just shoves in that spot. No use keeping $70 behind. He must be on a draw of some sort. The river is as blank as it gets, the four diamonds. Spades brick, there's no straight out there, and I think any full house would have raised the turn, so I feel very confident we have the best hand. I decide to go with a bet sizing of $200, targeting the middle position player. He thinks for a little while, goes back and forth, but eventually does put in the fold. The button player, however, snap calls and turns over King Jack offsuit. Ugh, that's a tough one. So he limped the button with King Jack offsuit, that makes sense, I can get behind that. Just call the $10 on the flop. That should probably be a raise spot on the button, but okay, fine. However, on the turn, when he just calls and leaves $70 behind, that seems a little ridiculous to me, but hey, it certainly hit the strength of his hand, so if that's what he was looking to accomplish, he did it. I personally would not advise playing your hand this way. You have trip kings and a semi-strong kicker, but hey, got the job done this time. For our next adventure, we look down at pocket jacks under the gun plus one. I decide to open things up to $10. Middle position comes along, and then the button player decides that $10 is not enough. He wants to play for more. He raises to $45. Playing out of position with a hand like jacks, I don't want to just call, see some overcards on the flop, and then be put in a tough spot. Let's see how much he actually likes his hand. I three bet to $120. Middle position snap folds, and now the button looks very annoyed at this spot. He thinks for a moment or so, but does fold pretty quickly. We collect an extra $55 without even having to go to a flop. I'll take that 10 times out of 10 with pocket jacks. What's up guys, quick change of venue. Win was going really well, but a friend of mine wanted to play 2-5 at Bellagio. Pretty much the same game, $500 max buy-in, just 2-5 instead of 1-3. So let's hop into that game. In our first interesting spot at Bellagio, we're in the big blind with Queen-10 offsuit. There's an early position open to $15 with three callers. We'll be closing the action, so I decide to come along as well. The flop comes Ace-King-6, two hearts. We have a gut shot and backdoor hearts. Not bad at all. Checks to the early position raiser, who makes it $25. That seems like a reasonable price to me. I make the call. We're now heads up to a turn, which comes the five of hearts. We still have our gut shot and now have improved to the second nut flush draw as well. I check, our opponent makes it $45. I'm certainly not going anywhere on this board. I make the call. The river is an absolute beauty, the jack of hearts. Hey, we did it, we hit our gut shot. And somewhat more importantly, we also have the second nut flush, but that's besides the point. I'm trying to figure out how to get the absolute max in this spot. We have about $316 remaining and my opponent covers me. I've seen this guy call down players pretty light in the past in the short time I've been at this table. He's shown strength on every single street so far, so it leads me to believe he does have a good hand. However, it's gonna be very tough for him to continue repping that strength on this street unless he has the king of hearts. 
we can account for the ace, queen, and jack of hearts, so his hands are kind of tied in this spot. If I check, I think he checks back almost always, so the only way to get max value is to take a somewhat unorthodox line in this spot. I jam all in. I'm extremely polarized in this spot, and I believe my opponent is competent enough to realize this. Really just hoping that he chooses to not believe me in this situation as I'm repping either my exact hand, like king of hearts, queen of hearts, or nothing at all. I would consider taking this exact line with zero hearts in my hand, as I believe boards that have four to a flush are great candidates for a bluff. Better when the ace isn't out there. Even when they have the flush, you are repping the ace. And if they don't have that ace, it's a very tough position to put them in. In this situation, the ace is out there, but my opponent has shown so much strength that I know he has something. It's just a matter of whether he believes I have a big flush or not. Unfortunately, after some time, he does settle on a fold and mumbles something about the 10 of hearts. So I do decide to troll my opponent a little bit in this spot and show him the 10, just not the 10 of hearts. Our next hand comes a little while later on the button. There's a raise from the cutoff to $15 and we look down at 10 six of hearts. Not the best holding, but for $15, I'm in there. The big blind comes along as well. The flop is not great, comes ace, queen, deuce, two clubs. We have absolutely nothing to do with this board, so when it checks to me, we have two choices. Either give up, or start a bluff. We don't really have the best candidate for a bluff as we have zero blockers to anything on this board, but we do have position, and sometimes that's enough. I bet out $30. The big blind folds, but the cutoff makes the call. The turn is now the jack of diamonds. The cutoff checks again, and we have improved to a gut shot, but outside of that, our 10 high is not looking too hot. This time I up the ante and bet $60. The cutoff thinks for a bit. He looks very uncomfortable, but does make the call. I put him on a one pair holding at this point, maybe even a one pair holding with a Broadway draw, such as King Jack, King Queen, Jack 10, uh, or possibly a weak ace. Any two pair or better, I think would have put in a raise in the spot. The river comes the eight of diamonds. Cutoff checks again, and we certainly can't win with our hand in this spot, so I go for the third barrel and bet out $140. The Broadway draws all bricked, uh, 910 gets there, but I don't really see 910 continuing on the flop unless it's specifically 910 of clubs. My opponent looks uncomfortable on the river, really echoing how he looked on the turn. He's shifting his cards around, seems as if he's leaning towards a fold, and I am mentally trying to gently guide him in that direction while staring at the board. However, after a little while, his mental gymnastics do eventually land on a call. I tell him he's good, and he shows us ace four offsuit. Ah, uh, that is exactly the type of hand I figured he had, like a weak one pair holding that a large bet should have gotten him off of, but this time uh, he sniffed it out and made the right call. In this next hand, I open from middle position to $15 with ace jack offsuit, folds around to the button who pops it up to 65. Folds back around to me, and I think this is good enough to see a flop heads up, so I put in the call. Flop comes seven, deuce, deuce, two spades. Not exactly the board we were looking for, but we do have the ace of spades. I check. Now our opponent over bets to $200. All I can think in this spot is, damn, that's a great bet. I really love the way our opponent played this hand. Of course, I can't call and do fold pretty quickly. Not too long after the last hand, we're dealt ace jack again, this time in the small blind. There's a middle position open to $25, we have one caller in the cutoff, and now it's my turn to raise things up. I make it $80 to go. The middle position player makes the call, and the cutoff folds. The middle position player is the exact same player from the prior hand with ace jack, so hoping that this time our luck goes a little differently. We do get, however, almost the exact same board, as the flop comes 7-3 deuce, rainbow. That's a little weird, but okay. I kind of get a bad feeling in this spot, to be honest with you, so I start things off with a check. This board does not favor my range whatsoever. Uh, middle position player now takes the lead and bets $75. We have absolutely nothing here, and once again have to click the fold button pretty quickly. Has anyone ever in the history of poker won a hand with ace-jack offsuit? Drop a comment down below and let me know if any of you have ever won a hand with ace-jack offsuit. It just seems impossible. In the last interesting hand of the session, we're dealt ace-queen on the button. There's a late position open to $20, the cutoff calls, and I decide to bump things up to $75. The original razor makes the call, and the cutoff folds. We are heads up to a flop of king-9-8, two spades. We really don't have much on this board, but there's certainly a lot of potential. Backdoor straights, backdoor flushes, we still have an overcard to the board, late position player checks, and I decide to check back to try to realize some of that potential. The deck believes in my potential more than I do myself sometimes, and rewards it with the ace of hearts on the turn. We've quickly gone from very little value to most likely the best hand. Best of all, our check back on the flop seems to have given our opponent the green light, and she now bets out $135. While the ace most likely gives us the best hand at this point, there are a ton of draws out there and a lot of river cards I won't like. 
I'd like to get it all in now while we're ahead if possible, so I jam. Our opponent asks for a count. She's getting just about three to one on a call. She looks very annoyed at the situation, debates for quite a while, but eventually puts in the fold. That is somewhat disappointing. Once she was tanking for a while, I knew I had the best hand and was rooting for a call, but the check back on the flop probably made us the maximum in this hand when she led the turn. I think if I put a bet out on the flop, maybe we get a call, maybe we don't. She certainly doesn't lead the turn at that point. So overall, I do think we ended up making the maximum in this spot. Shortly after this hand, I rack up and head out for the night. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, that was a pretty fun episode, playing at two different locations in the same day. I'm not usually someone that casino hops. I usually just pick a spot, uh, plant myself, and stay there. But in this particular instance, I uh, had a great time, was able to win at the win, and uh, about break even at Bellagio. Final numbers here, not sure exactly what they look like, but you guys will see. I'm in Vegas at the moment, currently walking past uh, Treasure Island, heading over to the win to log another session. Hopefully this one goes just as well. Thanks so much for watching. Please, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, send to a friend, leave a comment down below. Let me know how you think I played some of these hands. Good luck to you guys out there. Thanks for watching.